Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents, and a friend of mine for over 40 years is getting ready to break down something that many of us don't really think about. How ugly is reprobate? Some people have reprobate minds and don't even know it. But she's getting ready to show you just how ugly a reprobate mind is. Axe and quacks. Check this out. She got down on this. I was, I had to tie myself down listening. It's a wonderful message. My friend, Patricia Banks. Okay, guys, you know, um, this is a topic that's just been on my mind for a while. And uh, I've just been thinking about it and thinking about it and reading up on it. And and it's uh, uh, about a retrobate mind. Mm. And um, I'm going to start with Romans 128. All right. Okay. Even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. All right. So, uh, like I was saying, I've been really dwelling on this retrobate mind subject and reading up on it. Romans 128 says, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do things which are not convenient. And uh, you guys, we can thank God that God's church of love is awake that we are called out of this world, that we are redeemed of the Lord, and that Dr. Love loves the Lord thy God with all her heart and with all her soul and with all her mind. And that's what Jesus asked us to do in Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven. How hard is that, God? How hard is that to do that for God, to love him with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind, all he's done and doing for us when you are called under his grace and his mercy and love. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So I've been studying and, um, as I said, reading up on the retrobate mind. So none of this is going to come to a surprise to you in God's church of love. Like I said, you're awake, we're anointed, we're blessed, and we get the word every Saturday, bless, bless the name of the Lord. So I felt in my spirit that Pat was overwhelmed and extra busy, and I wasn't sure with what, with her book, or I just saw her going from left to right, left to right, just left to right, a little bit stressed out, a little bit not stressed out. A little bit stopped, a little bit. And I thought, gee, and a thought came to my mind like, um, maybe I can give her a break and bring the message. But as soon as I thought that, I wanted to get out of it. So, so I, uh, I wanted to confirmation. And I thought, uh, well, if she calls me and asks me, then that's confirmation. Guys, that's not faith. That's trying to get out of doing what God wanted me to do. But uh, God is good. He's so gracious and good. And uh, so I didn't get that confirmation. And then I got busy and uh, things got away from me. And uh, last night, the Lord convicted me to call Pat and apologize. And I apologized for the Lord for slacking on what he put on my heart. And when I called and told her about it, of course she cracked up and said, girl, please, I thank you. But I, I, I understand. And she said, you know, you're not writing a thesis. You can still talk. You don't have need all week to bring all that together. Just, you know, just talk for what's ever on your mind. 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes. You know, what a relief that was to hear. God, you're so blessed with a leader that is open and flexible to the Spirit of God and to the Holy Spirit. So I got up early this morning, finished what I had started, 
So, guess what, guys? I wanted more confirmation. Oh, that's just me. I wanted more confirmation. So, a pastor came to mind who I'd listened to for a while, but I hadn't listened to him this whole entire year. Real on fire for the Lord, Pastor uh, Benjamin Fairclough. So I found him on YouTube, and he had a guest on. I'm sure some of you are familiar with Steve Quayle. And that was his guest speaker, and he asked Steve, asked Steve Quayle what was on his mind. Okay, guys, anybody want to guess what his topic was? <laughs> a know. retrobate mind. Look at that. <laughs> that means I better get to work on this message, right? Oh, <laughs> Praise wow. the Lord. So um, let me read on what I found about a retrobate mind. Mm -hmm. The retrobate mind is a mind is that when a sinner is so hardened, that they feel no remorse right. or misgiving of conscience for particularly vile acts. This means that God has effectively, permanently withdrawn his offer of salvation mm. by giving them over to a seared conscience. Oh, my Lord. That is so serious and so heartbreaking. Wow. So, you know, we know the evil man, the natural man, I should say, does evil all the time. And there's a guy I watch on YouTube uh, sometimes, and his name is Steve Bryant. Most of his content is about people doing evil deeds. Now, I love Steve's heart in that he's seeking justice for victims, okay? Mm -hmm. But Steve doesn't understand what's his carnal mind while all this is happening. Let me tell you that one of the stories he covered was a woman, after she gave birth in her third floor apartment and the baby was born, she threw the baby out the window. <laughs> Of course, the baby didn't survive. Another story was a woman who kills her husband, flees in her car with her six-month-old baby and his nine-year-old sister. She flings him out of the car on a busy freeway. The baby didn't survive. The nine-year-old did. The mom crashed in a tree. And she died on impact. Mm. This last story I'm going to mention, I sent it to Pat because it has a miraculous ending. A man beats and stabs his wife multiple times, sets her on fire oh. while her young children are yelling, please, daddy, don't kill mommy. Two men happened by, and they happened to be both Christians, saw the smoke and rescued her. She lived. Mm. Mm. Guys, domestic violence is off the mm. chain. Mm. Violence period is off the chain. Let me read you this before I go on. The rest of, uh, I was in Romans 1 at 28. I'm going to go on to 29. Um, yeah, well, I'll start back where I was. And even if they did not like to retain the knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do things that were not convenient. Being filled with unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignant, whisperers. I can't even pronounce some of these things. Backsliders, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things disobedient to parents. Now, as I said, the natural man is, is led. The natural man does evil all the time. He's not filled with the Holy Spirit. And he is not coming to the knowledge of God. He's rejecting God. And God's going to give him just what he wants. <laughs> 
So I read that to let Steve know why this is happening. It's in the Word of God. To all the Steves out there that don't understand what's going on in the world, this is why it's going on. It's a rebellion against God. When God gives people over to a retrobate mind, to full rebellion, it is accompanied by a heart heartening that is purposeful. I mean, the most famous one we know about, of course, is Pharaoh. But this will keep these people, this hardening of the heart will keep these people from ever being affected by the preaching of the gospel. Now, that's deep. That is deep. Oh, that's, wow. that's deep, guys. Not even the gospel can reach them now. So I'm telling you, only God can break through this hardening. Right. But I want to have, I'll have some good news for the church. And if someone is listening out there that doesn't know the Lord, and that's what I'm praying, that someone finds this channel and this message, not for me to glorify the Lord. And if you're not saved, I don't believe it's a coincidence you're listening to this message. Guys, pray with me now as I pray over someone who may just want to change their mind today and come to know the Lord as their Savior. Repeat after me. Dear Lord, I know that I'm a sinner. I believe you died for my sin. I turn from my sin and open the door of my heart and life. I confess you as my personal Lord and Savior. And I want to thank you. I want to thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name. I want to end this for you, church, with just five things that we, of the many, 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 many countless infinite things we have and promises when we come to know the Lord as our Savior. Remember, your sins are no more. That's Isaiah 43, 25. How about no one can snatch you out of my hand? That's John 10, 28. How about I've called you friend? He calls you friend. Right. John 15, 15. I chose you. John 15, 16. And last but not least, I'm coming for you. Yes. 11, Revelation 20. Two seven church be blessed and we are thank you thank you Lord for giving me the opportunity yes. to speak your word and be a blessing to your people Ooh. thank you Amen. holy oh, girl unmuted. oh my goodness wow wow you preach yeah. like you have been preaching every oh, Sunday man. for for, yeah, that for was, years that was, that was oh my thank God you. it really was. Thank you, guys. So if you can find yourself using other people's money behind their back, taking advantage of things they're depending on for their future, and it doesn't bother you that you left them in a lurch. It doesn't bother you that your actions have put them in a precarious position, literally throwing them and their lives under the bus while you tiptoe through the tulips with some new girlfriend or some new boyfriend because they're old, they're old goods. You need some new stuff in your life. And you don't feel sorry about how you've hurt people. You don't feel sorry about how you've used people. Baby, that's a sign right there. You got a, rep a reprobate mind. I don't care how if you can spell Jesus' name forward, backwards, upside down, or inside out. Check yourself when you realize that you are shameless. You have no, no consideration for someone else's feelings, for their well-being, for their situation. You don't care as long as you take care of me, myself, and I. That's reprobate, baby. That's a brief synopsis on that. We'll go further into detail on another day. God bless you as you think, hopefully, and pray on that one.